This week in Jamaica now, COVID worry deepening, deaths climbing, infections surging, government introduces antigen testing. Former Cabinet Minister Dr. D.K. Duncan dies. His family is heartened by the outpouring of support. P.J. Patterson says he lost a friend. A contract killer breaks down in tears. He details the $3 million killing of the wife of a Portland businessman and is sentenced to 19 years in prison. MPs and senators sworn in. Why Edward Warmington was on edge. You must pay attention. And Lisa Hanna hangs on after judicial recount. The Westmoreland Eastern results are overturned. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. The COVID worry is deepening in Jamaica. This week, deaths passed the 50 mark and infections crossed 4,000 cases. The health minister, Dr. Christopher Tufton, says increases are being recorded in every parish. In the meantime, the government is now preparing to introduce antigen testing come October. Harbor director of the National Public Health Laboratory, Dr. Michelle Hamilton, says it could generate false negatives. We are able to miss at times up to 20% of those who are really positive for COVID. So we'll detect 80% approximately of those asymptomatic patients who are COVID positive, we will detect those. But we will miss the remaining 20%. And so for those patients, we would have to follow up with, uh, with the PCR test. But I want to make it very clear too, that we are putting on the market tests that have been approved by PAHO. There are antigen tests out there with a range of, of uh, sensitivity. And so the one we are using can, can give us approximately 80% sensitivity. We pick up 80% of the cases. Dr. Hamilton says the antigen test, now approved by the Pan-American Health Organization, will only be used for people with COVID symptoms and will only be made available to doctors. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton said the results of the tests will be made available to patients, doctors within 30 minutes of sampling. He also said clear guidelines will be set for stakeholders who will use the kits. There has been an outpouring of tributes following the death of veteran politician Dr. D.K. Duncan. He died at hospital where he had been admitted for weeks. Duncan, a former cabinet minister, had tested positive for COVID-19. Former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson is among those who have remembered Duncan. Patterson said the former political organizer was his friend for more than 60 years. The former Prime Minister also said Duncan's contribution to the People's National Party and his beloved Jamaica are substantial and legendary. Patterson said as PNP General Secretary, Duncan used his world-class political organizational skills to build a robust secretariat and to strengthen the party's structure which led to the further democratizing of the party's decision-making. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Education Ministry has established an Education COVID-19 Management Task Force, eCOVID. Portfolio Minister Fable Williams said the task force will arrive at a consensus on the reopening and management of schools amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The minister has revealed that 361 public schools have reported having good internet connectivity, 399 have poor connectivity, and 220 have no connectivity. Rihanna Robinson, the PRO of the National Secondary Students Council, told a Gleaner Editors Forum on Thursday that this issue needs urgent attention. Even now, some schools have begun virtually and they are experiencing some challenges with regards to their device efficiency, internet connectivity. So right now, the council really believes that we're not, we're not ready to be back in the physical space just as yet. And right now, the country needs to be focused on ensuring that make as many students as possible have access to a device and access to the internet. A contract killer has detailed how he lured Tonya McDonald, the wife of popular Portland businessman Everton Beachy Stout McDonald, to a deserted roadway in the parish and watched as the man he subcontracted stabbed her repeatedly. The details were outlined in the home circuit court on Monday after 46-year-old Denvalin Minot pleaded guilty to murder for his role in the July 20, 2020 killing. Minot was on Thursday sentenced to 19 years in prison and ordered to serve 10 years before he becomes eligible for parole. Minot's confessions were contained in a caution statement he made to detectives assigned to the Major Investigation Division 
two weeks after the partially burned body of the 32-year-old businesswoman was found with her throat slashed inside her car in Sherwood Forest, Portland. Everton McDonald, also known as Mr. Mac, 65, and another man, Asher Barnes, have been arrested and charged with the gruesome slaying. Minot, in his caution statement, broke down in tears as he said he got a $3 million contract by Everton McDonald to kill Tonya. Minot, a fisherman who also resides in Portland, claimed too that Beachy Stout gave him clear instructions on how he wanted his wife to be killed. He said McDonald did not want the wife to be shot. He said he instructed that she was to be stabbed and her body burnt. In the corporate area, the police are now probing the murder of two sisters who were shot dead in their yard in Mona Common, St. Andrew. The deceased, Tiffany Hunter and Rene Martel, were meters apart when they were attacked. The murder happened on Hunter's birthday on Thursday. It is reported that sometime after 3 p.m., Hunter had just returned from a Western Union outlet when two men on a bike rode into the community. They opened fire at both sisters. Both were hit and died on the scene. Parliament officially began this week at the Jamaica Conference Center with the swearing-in of senators and members of the House of Representatives. Marissa Dalrymple Philbert was named Speaker of the House with Juliet Holness as her deputy. The change of venue from Gordon House was in order to adhere to the physical distancing protocols. Manchester Central MP Rhoda Crawford reaped the loudest applause as she was called up. <laughs> Meanwhile, 23-year-old Gabriella Morris was sworn in as the youngest senator ever and St. Catherine Southwestern MP Everett Warmington was on edge as he took the oath. And I will conscientiously and impartially discharge my responsibilities to the people of Jamaica. So help me God. Marlene Patricia. No, I don't sign it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so sorry. You must pay attention. <laughs> And a day earlier, independent candidate Rohan Chung declared that he was taking the matter of the Manchester Central Judicial Recount to the Supreme Court. Chung, who had filed for the recount, polled 48 votes. The PNP's Peter Bunting received 6,989, while Rhoda Crawford secured 8,139. Chung is now facing more than $2 million in legal costs filed by his opponent's teams. A lot of people keep saying that they have to bring me down because I should not be siding with poor people. I should be a part of the society's cover-up. Uh, if I support, you know, a leader, I don't think I should be subjected to say I'm a part of a cover-up. So there's other documents I'm waiting on to be filed by other parties here as cost. So based on my personals, I'll check with my accountants, my lawyers and other personals and make sure that everything is uh, verified. In St. Anne Southeastern, the PNP's Lisa Hanna held on to her seat following the recount, while in Westmoreland Eastern, the results were overturned. The JLP's Daniel Lawrence is now the Member of Parliament, breaking a 30-year stronghold for the PNP. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at gleanerjm.com. You may follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, turn on your notifications, and subscribe today. I'm Damian Mitchell, and before we go, remembering former Cabinet Minister and People's National Party stalwart, Dr. D.K. Duncan.